Uh, to take you behind the scenes here, uh, if you're watching on Good Morning Football, we do the show three hours a day, five days a week. We do it all off season, and then there is a week next week where we have to make predictions, and it is so much build up and yet so much pressure for us because we really want to be right and we really want to put all the work mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And you got to decide which seven teams are going to the playoffs in one conference, which seven aren't. And then you start looking at team by team by team. It really becomes a passion project. And I don't see any scenario where the Carolina Panthers don't improve greatly this mm. season. I think the Carolina Panthers are due for at least a two or three win bump. And I look at them because of what they're getting back at the running back position in Christian McCaffrey, what they're getting back at the cornerback position in J.C. Horn. And the upgrade they're getting at quarterback. I do think Baker is an upgrade from what they've had the last few years, whether it be a noble start by Sam Darnold into the Cam Newton thing and then the P.J. Walker at the end. Matt Rule has not had a healthy Christian McCaffrey for a full season yet. We're, fingers crossed, getting that this season. I think J.C. Horn was coming on in those first three games. He's going to have a fantastic year in year two. And I think that now, with, with what they've got on the field, is youth and talent, and then a quarterback who is the undisputed leader, and with Darnold out with injury, is no doubt getting at least four weeks under center before anyone says, well, should we start the other guy? Gosh, I look at Carolina, and what I say, this is going to come off as very you know, degrading, mm. but well, it might be a watered-down NFC this year. Like, yeah. I, I, I see the Packers, I see the Buccaneers, I see the Rams, all three of those teams are probably going to the playoffs. I don't know yeah, where that, that fourth hard. power team is. Why not Carolina? I see Carolina, and they, they haven't been great the last few years. I see Carolina at least winning three more games, mm -hmm. maybe four more games, just on the McCaffrey and Horn factor, and then you throw in Baker. Uh, I don't know if Matt Rule can outcoach Sean McVay in a big game. I don't know if Matt Rule can outcoach uh, Matt LaFleur in a big game. I know that Matt Rule can win more mm. regular season games with a healthy team than he did last year. So I'm going to say Panthers. Are can I ask you earlier in the offseason, to your point, we threw out this question of, all right, so Rams, Buccaneers, and Packers, who is that fourth team in the NFC? Right, and you were all mad because we were framing it as the Cowboys. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think it's the Cowboys, but when we threw it out, like, you know what the most popular response was of who's the fourth team is? Do you have a guess? Like, who it no. would be? Mm. It's the 49ers. Yeah. Even mm. with Trey Lance, they're just mm. so solid mm. and so well coached, but that's a massive question mark for them. I don't, I don't yeah. count them in there yet. I don't either. know. Panthers, I know will be, boom, they will, I think that uh, they'll be a lot closer to 10 wins than what they were last mm -hmm. year with six or five. I don't yeah. find that egregious what you said, the watered down NFC. I think just they go in ebbs and flows and sometimes one is better than the other. And I think that's just the nature of the NFC this year comparatively to the AFC too. Yeah, some question marks in that division too. You know, I, I think uh, for them, they're, they're sitting pretty. So uh, in the spirit of this conversation, like, so, all right, I'm, I'm looking at the Bengals, the big jump last year, second year quarterback coming off ACL. We didn't, nobody expected the Bengals to have that big leap. So I'm, I'm going to go with another second year quarterback. Give me the Jacksonville Jaguars. Give me Trevor Lawrence mm. kind of emulating and trying to do what Joe Burrow did in year two. Look, he's not coming off ACL. He's, he's got the whole offseason to build this new offense. I can't wait to see. Trevor Lawrence, I thought last year, was the least talked about number one overall pick in the history of number one overall picks. Yeah. Like we just we didn't talk about, other about stuff him. Going on in Jacksonville. There was nothing sexy to talk about. Anytime we talk about Jacksonville, it was bad Urban Meyer. It was it was dysfunction. It was all this stuff. Like, I think he's got a clean slate. He's got a quarterback that played the game. He's got a quarterback that's been to the mountaintop, Doug Peterson. I think that alone right there is instilling all kinds of confidence in not just Trevor, but this entire offense. The weapons that they added, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram. I think this offense is going to surprise a lot of people. And I think we saw explosive plays from the Bengals last year that we didn't know we were going to get out of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I think we're going to get some of that same production offensively. Doug Peterson, I don't think gets enough credit for how good he is offensively. When, they, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple years ago, they led the league in runs over 10 yards. His run game attack and his run game prowess, I, I think, it kind of flies under the radar. So I think that's going to be an added bonus. I think a lot of the credit goes to Frank Reich. Well, Frank Reich as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, Look that coaching doing. staff, it gets kind of. Yeah. I think Travis Etienne is going to benefit from that. I know we talk about him as a receiving running back, but I think him and hopefully if James Robinson can come back healthy, um, and I didn't even talk about Trayvon Walker. I'll save that for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I think regardless of who you attribute that Eagles team to, like Doug Peterson is the steady hand, I think, that Trevor Lawrence needed coming into a second yeah. year. Seven wins for my team is, is hard to make a huge jump upon, but I'm going to go on the Denver Broncos because yeah. they finished 7-10 and 10 last year. Um, 
but most importantly, I don't think they finish fourth in the AFC West, which is what they did last year, and that's where I see their jump coming in. Russell Wilson is a baller quarterback. I mean, he's just going to step into this moment. I know the whole town, you know, people are trying to tamp down expectations, but like, hello, it's reasonable. It's Russell Wilson. Have you seen your wide receivers? Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy are fantastic, and I think their potential is untapped at this point. I know the AFC West is an absolute bear, but to the point where I think some of these teams are going to beat up on each other a little bit, and it's going to allow the Broncos to emerge. I mean, it's Russell Bleepin Wilson. I think he's going to be fantastic. Yeah, right. My high seven. Let's ride. And I think seven wins is not that far up to go to ten wins. Mm. And I think it, you know, win number wise, I'm, I'm manipulating the question a bit, but like, yeah. more so fourth in the AFC West. I think I see that being one of the bigger mm -hmm. jumps than any other team that finished last in their division last year. It's this question we can't escape is that one of those AFC West quarterbacks is not making the playoffs. Yes. One of them has to not make not it. Dude, you, you are can have four. about prediction. What is that? There's wow. now two wild card spots, so you can have four. You think? All four can make it, but no other team, no other divisions can have multiple hmm. teams. It would be highly unlikely. It's never been done. Yeah. yeah. Likely one, if not two, will make yeah. them. So it, one of the questions, before I even get to my, that, that comes up every August and September that I always love is, which is the team that is, is going to go from last to first, which is kind of this repurposing. So let me just whip around. The last place teams in last, in last year in their division, the Seahawks, that would be highly unlikely, but they got a great coach and they got some good players. The Panthers, we mentioned. The Lions would be a shock, but who the hell knows? <laughs> The Giants would be a huge shock, but again, new coach. Like there's there's wild cards with a lot of those. The Broncos you mentioned, the Jaguars you mentioned, um, the Ravens are pretty juicy. Ooh, you know, the Ravens were a last place team. Were they? Yeah, the La the Ravens finished eight and nine. So did the Browns. The Ravens looking last in the in the AFC North last year. I think they have to be given consideration. Yeah. Now maybe they only raise it from eight to eleven. Right. But to go from last to first, and then also the Jets, I think would be a big shock, especially with Zach Wilson. But as you guys know, like I I love this post Bengals era that we're in because it is this hope springs eternal. Anything's mm -hmm. possible. If they did it, you can do it. And we mentioned some of these teams, but this is the list that I've been keeping of the teams that would be the equivalent of what the Bengals are doing last year. In other words, Panthers and Jaguars. If the Chicago Bears were in the NFC title game, let alone the Super Bowl this year, I think it would be reminiscent in a lot of ways of what the Bengals did last year. They have a second year quarterback like the Bengals did. Same thing with the Texans. Davis Mills in his second year finds the magic, they put it together, and then Lions. In other words, these are teams that were really bad last year in one way or another, like the Bengals were, and then somehow came surging back and none of us saw it coming. Oh my gosh, how did we not see that the Texans had all these pieces and love you as old school defense and we're sitting here in January and be like, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. That is the equivalent of what the Bengals did last year. That's my list of teams that could fit that it's role. It's interesting because the Bengals finished 2021 with like two wins out of their last three games and That's they hot. beat the Steelers at, in that big game on a... On Who was the quarterback? The quarterback was Allen. It was... It Brandon was not, Allen? Yeah, it was Brandon Allen. Yeah. That's the Lions last year. The uh -huh. Lions won, I think, three of their last five games, yeah, and yeah. they were in it at the end. And like that—that's the similarity there. Detroit would be your team if you're saying who finished and tracked the same way. And there's an institutional prejudice, I think, against the Lions. But there was against the Bengals yes, too. It's yes, the Bengals. You can't get your act together, and then they're in the Super Bowl. So I think all bets are off. It hmm. is all. There is no team that can't. Jacksonville, Detroit. Chicago, everyone is in play. Anything's possible. I love it. And there is, because it's so recent in our memory, that there is a satisfaction of being like, I did it. I called it. I was the one yeah. that was like going to bat for these guys. So you're kind of covering your bases with your long oh, list yes, there. I am. You're like, I had them. They were on my list of five. On the list. I've changed it like six times, too. <laughs> All right. Happy